Hello, my dear cooks and scientists. Welcome. I'm Aida. He's Arthur. <laughs> Join us to prepare some flour tortillas. In the experiment, we will see the difference between using shortening or vegetable oil. And also we will see what is the effect of the baking powder in the texture of the tortillas. Let's go. Typically, twice as many ingredients are used. But since we are making three samples, we will only use half the ingredients called for in the recipe. In the description, I'll leave you the complete recipe. For sample one, we weighed 2.5 ounces of whole wheat flour and 6.2 ounces of all-purpose flour. We measure a teaspoon of salt, which weighs approximately 0.2 ounces. We weighed 1.6 ounces of vegetable shortening. We measure about 5 fluid ounces of warm water between 85 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit. First, we mix the solids and add the fat or the shortening. Mix until the fat is perfectly integrated into the flour and until the mixture is sandy with tiny crumbs. Gradually add the water and continue mixing. As in all those, the amount of water will always vary, depending on the freshness of the flour we use, among other factors. The idea is to add water until you get a slightly sticky dough. Once we get that consistency, we knead for about 5 minutes. It is not necessary to knead so much. We are going to let it rest, and this will help the gluten to finish developing. The dough has a little hole with flour, so the texture is more rigid and less flexible than 100% all-purpose flour dough. But on the other hand, these tortillas have a bit of fiber, making them more nutritious. We weigh the dough, and in this case I will divide it into 6 balls of approximately 2.5 ounces each. We form the dough balls, move the ends of the dough to the center, and we make balls by pressing and turning on the work table. If necessary, we close the ball again. When using whole wheat flour, balls are slightly more rigid and take more work to form. We place the balls in the same container where we mix the flour and cover them with a cloth or plastic so they will not dry out. Although plastic retains the moisture better, I prefer to reduce its use. We let them stand for 30 minutes. We are going to prepare sample number 2. We weigh the exact amounts of flour, 2.6 ounces of whole wheat flour, 6.2 ounces of flour, and a teaspoon of salt. We keep constant the amount of ounces of fat that we use, 1.6 ounces. I'm using grapeseed oil. We also use water around 86 degrees Fahrenheit, keeping this factor constant. We mix the powders, add the oil, and obtain a texture similar to the previous one, a sandy mixture with tiny crumbs. Add the water little by little. I use a slightly less water this time, around 0.85 fluid ounces less. This may be because the oil is liquid, providing more moisture to the dough. We weigh the dough and divide it into 6 balls. In this occasion, there are balls of around 2.3 ounces. We use the same procedure to make the balls, let them rest for 30 minutes, covered with a kitchen towel. We prepare the dough of sample 3, which is the same as sample 2, but in this case, we will add half a teaspoon of baking powder. Divide the dough into 6 balls of approximately 2.3 ounces, consistent with the previous dough's preparation. I want to take a ball of this dough number 3, and do an extra experiment. I want to make the tortilla without letting the dough rest to see what happens. When passing the roller, we observe how the tortilla shrinks. Gluten is not yet developed. We cook the tortilla and keep it warm in this towel to try it later. It's been 30 minutes since we finished preparing the dough for sample number one. It's time to make the tortillas. Roll the rolling pin over the ball of dough. We turn and pass the roller again. Repeat until we obtain a thin tortilla. We try to get a tortilla as close to a circle. 
But we don't worry if they don't fit precisely circularly. It's also attractive to make the tortillas by hand. They don't have an exact shape. The pan or coma should be preheated over medium heat. If you are using a wooden rolling pin, you may require a little floor to prevent the dough from sticking. We observe the flexibility of the dough. We can stretch it, trying to give it a circular shape, so that it will be thinner and in a better shape. The first tortilla was prepared with vegetable shortening on the fire. The first sides should cook for 20 to 30 seconds. Here it took us a little more time, about 40 seconds. And this is because my comal was not hot enough yet. Anyway, this experiment is helpful to observe how the tortilla behaves when the skillet or comal has not yet reached the proper temperature. The second side cooks about 20 seconds. About the last turn, we let it cook between 10 and 20 seconds, whatever it takes for the tortilla to inflate. Look at this beautiful tortilla! It goes outside! And we reserve it to do the taste later. We wrap the tortillas in a kitchen towel to keep them warm. And how do I know when to flip the tortilla for the first time? As a reference, we cook the first side until we see the bubbling on top and some golden brown blistering on the bottom. For this second tortilla, we let it cook 30 seconds for the first side, 30 seconds the second side, and on the last flip, 20 seconds. The cooking time between 20 or 30 seconds will also depend on how thin or thick we make the tortillas. Out of mere scientific curiosity, we see that the surface temperature of the tortilla, when inflated, is around 235 degrees Fahrenheit. This temperature is higher than the boiling temperature of the water and is due to the steam that forms inside the tortilla. Let's go to the next block of experiments. Dough number 2. Obtain it with the vegetable oil. We can observe the flexibility of the dough. Tortilla to the fire. 30 seconds flip. 30 seconds second flip. And finally, 20 seconds. What cool tortillas! With this mechanism, we finish cook all the tortillas. This tortilla reaches 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go to the third batch of experiments. These are the tortillas that we prepare with vegetable oil and with baking powder. How weird! Even though this dough has been resting for 30 minutes, we see how the tortilla shrinks slightly when we try to roll it. Yes, it feels flexible. To the fire! We cook it for 30 seconds on the first side, a little over 20 seconds for the second side, and 20 seconds for the third flip. And it doesn't puff. Whoops. We observe the flexibility of the dough and go to the fire. 32 seconds the first side, 30 seconds second side. And here the tortilla begins to puff 20 seconds into cooking on the last flip. It's time to try the tortillas. Let's start with the first tortilla we made. Tortilla with dough number 3, with no rest. The dough is prepared with vegetable oil and baking powder. We fold it, oh, we see that it immediately breaks. It's logical because the gluten didn't manage to develop. We'll observe the tortillas of the first dough that was made with the vegetable shortening. The roll test, we fold it to one side, we extend it, we blend it, it it towards to other, perfect, does not break. Quickly, we look at all the tortillas, we fold them, and they all pass the test. Let's go with the second block of experiments from the dough prepared with vegetable oil. Let's look at the first tortilla. The first fold, phew, it passes the test. A fold of the reverse, okay. Roll test, approve it. All the tortillas in this block pass the test. Let's go with the last block of experiments, tortillas made with baking powder and vegetable oil. 
First fold, okay. Second fold, oh no. We have a little break. Oh no. And it doesn't pass the test roll. It is broken. It's just a tortilla. Let's see the other four. Tortilla two, fold one, thumbs up. Second fold, thumbs up. Roll test. These tortillas feels more crumbly. Tortillas prepared with baking powder feel thicker. We look closer at this tortilla and tortilla for to number two and we confirm that it is indeed thicker. This difference in thickness, maybe because from the beginning we prepared thicker tortillas, we needed to pass the roller more times. We didn't control the initial size and the thickness of the tortillas. Or we can expect that this increase in thickness is due to the effect of the baking powder, which is activated between 104 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Releasing carbon dioxide which remains trapped in the dough, generating a sponge. Test and texture test. Tortilla number 3. I like the test, but I don't say that I like the texture. It feels pasty and sticky. Tortilla number 2. I like the flavor and the texture of the tortilla. Tortilla number 1. I like the flavor and the texture equal. And to choose the winning tortilla, I would like us to take a closer look the characteristics of the kind of fat that we are using. In general, there are two types of fat, saturated and unsaturated. Saturated fats are usually solid at room temperature, while unsaturated fats are typically liquid at room temperature. Vegetable shortening is made from a mixture of vegetable fats, usually soybean, cottonseed and palm. On the other hand, grape seed oil is obtained only from the seeds of the grape. The dietary guidelines for Americans suggest that the less than 10% of daily calories should come from saturated fats. Since saturated fats tend to raise blood cholesterol levels and are also linked to many other conditions. We are comparing the nutritional values of the shortening and the oil we use. The shortening contains more saturated fat per tablespoon than the oil. Just for this, I prefer grapeseed oil. But let's move forward. Regarding trans and monounsaturated fats, we observe they have the same content. We have a tie. We note that grapeseed oil is higher in polyunsaturated fat, the type of fat from the group omega, omega-3, 6, 7, and 9. When saturated fats are replaced with these types of polyunsaturated fats, you can lower the bad cholesterol, lower triglycerides, increase good cholesterol, and have a better blood glucose control. Also, another benefit of grapeseed oil is that it contains antioxidants such as vitamin E and flavonoids, which can help to protect the body from damage caused by free radicals. The tortillas that we made with the baking powder. The texture is different. Also, I feel different in my mouth, like, uh, like chewy, I can say. So I don't like the, uh, the texture in my mouth. And also, I feel like they're more thick and looks like they're easily cracked. Mm -hmm. So I don't like this. And in between these two tortillas, the tortillas making with shortening and with vegetable oil, I can see a really big difference between the texture and the flavor. So for me, the winner tortillas are these tortillas, the ones that we made with the vegetable oil. Thank you for watching us, for sharing your experiments, your results, your questions, and for subscribing.